Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. We're in the fish room and we're doing some jobs. It may be obvious by the absence of water in Mega Tank. Mega Tank is one of the jobs. Regular viewers will know Mega Tank is my DIY wooden aquarium. I built this myself. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot and it's a leaky boy. So yeah, like I say, regular viewers will be aware of this, but this is something that I have built with no experience and it's cost me. It's been quite leaky. I've had various problems and I'm now playing chase the problem. So the last in the litany of disasters was the tank was leaking from the front because it was bowing from this area. So the pressure here is so immense. It was actually pushing the entire front of the glass, the, the wood holding it together, all out. We fixed that. So extra reinforcement all the way along. It can no longer push out the front. So it's pushing out the back. So the pressure's involved when you're talking about a tank this size. So like I say, the surface area is eight foot by four foot. When you go down the full three feet, the, the pressure, the force, the hydrostatic pressure, whatever you want to be, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds worth of pressure that's pushing on all those things. Now, while I did account for that, I obviously underestimated it because it's not worked. So it's holding it at the front. I now need to come up with a plan to hold it at the back. Because of the reinforcements I put in the front, I can no longer move Mega Tank around, so I can't get in behind it. So the reinforcements have to be from the inside. So I'll come up with a plan. And the plan is these. It looks like it's a good plan. It's a plan. I've got these steel brackets, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line the inside of the tank, securing the bottom to the bottom of the tank and the side to the side of the tank. And there is method behind this madness, a reason I think this might work. So how this manifested itself is that line you can see across the back. I could see there was a very definite split where the back was being pushed away from the bottom, just as it was at the front, but at the back. It was almost holding on um, and I, there was a hairline crack that you could see there. Obviously it's going to get worse over time if I don't sort it out. But I fixed it by cleaning it all out, um, fiberglassing everything, re-coating with liquid rubber again and saying ah, everything will be fine. Put it back together and it did exactly the same thing. Hairline crack, water started leaking out even more than it did before I fixed it. So back to the drawing board, I've scraped it all out again fiberglassed everything. I'm going to line the back and the sides with these steel brackets because it's almost holding. So I think with the addition of all these extra fixings and securities, securities or a word like that, if I dot these along, go in fiberglass over the top of these, like with rubber over everything, make it so there's nothing obvious, there'll be nothing obvious in the fish tank that should hold it in place. And then everything along all the bottom, so we've got extra reinforcements at the front, we'll have extra in the back and I'll put some on the sides as well. Touch wood, in theory, that should be it. A lesson I've learned from my previous fixes and attempted fixes is that I need to allow a lot more time for things to cure, like fiberglass, like silicon, like liquid rubber. Otherwise, it just, it doesn't work. Um, so, you're not going to see the, the end product in this, but by the time this video's out, I might have already done it. So, yeah, time travel. Period. Come and join me on a Friday night. I usually do a live stream most Friday evenings. Uh, come and join me. I'll tell you more about it then. While I do some of these water changes, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update of what's going on with Mega Tank. Obviously, I did it wrong. So, there's no point leaving me the comments down below going, Oh, you should have built it right the first time. I know I should have built it right the first time. I didn't know how to do this. I tried, I failed. I hopefully I'm starting to learn. If I was to build this again from scratch, I think I'd have a much more successful attempt. Um, but there's no getting away from it. If it wasn't for the fact that I had the fish for Mega Tank, I would have given up on this. We've talked about this a little bit on the live stream about would I do it again? I don't know. There's so many things I could do with this space, but now that I've got the big fish, so for instance, I've got some of the Oscars and Silver Dollars are in here. We've got the snake head and the giant Grammy over in a tank. Of Fish are moving around, they're fine short term, but they need a tank of this size. But they need a tank of this size long term. Otherwise it's just not fair for them. So I am resolved to keep fixing this until I get it right. Um, feel free to join me on the journey and tell me all the ways I'm getting it wrong as so many people like to do it. But at the end of the day, it's a learning experience. If you're planning on building your own big tank, 
this is probably the perfect thing to watch to see all the ways not to do it. So I hope to God you've watched this video rather than starting your build after watching my first video. If not, sorry. Um, but we'll get there. Maybe, hopefully. Yes, we will, we will. God, I hope we will. In terms of all the other tanks, like I say, we've got some in here. So, save room, some of the Oscars, silver dollars. They're all doing fine. And this is a five foot tank they're in, which again, is fine short term, but it's not ideal long term, obviously. But look at the Oscar, don't you look cool? Little baby one there is putting on some size as well. He's doing well. So yeah, it's all about the fish now. It's no longer a project. These are the animals I have to provide a home for. So we've got to get it fixed. Out here we've got Gordon the Snakehead over here and my giant Grammy, who I've just realised is without name, but he is quite the personality. So again, another five foot tank out here, I've got these two in. Fine short term, not great long term. So that's why we're doing this, that's why we're persevering. But this guy's great, loves everything, eats everything. And gets on well. These two, and what is really a very small tank for them, are doing really well. So we'll get them back in eventually. So while I've been sorting this out, and as regular viewers might know, I've not been very well recently, I've not really done a whole hell of a lot fish-wise in the fish room, or bought any new fish, other than this guy, who is the most awesome little Fahaka puffer. He is a Father's Day present, so I've had him a good two or three weeks now, probably a bit longer than that. He's putting on size. I have had a hack up before. Ideally, one of the tanks that's holding either Gordon or the Oscars or something will eventually hold this. So, still very small at the moment, but Fahakas are one of the larger freshwater puffer species. Uh, he will get to a fairly decent size, so he will need a good five foot, six foot tank. Um, feeding quite well, we've got, let's see, got a little snail for him at the moment. He was being fed on, he was being fed on um, mussels in the shop, which isn't an ideal food. Um, so I still am giving him a couple of cooked mussels because they're a little bit better than raw mussels. Um, but I'm getting him onto a diet of snails and other goodies. He's now looking at me suspiciously because I'm filming him. But he normally readily eats. He gets his big fat belly. <laughs> Just like his owner. So one of the best things I like about puffers is watching them feed. It's circling their prey. The deadly snail. Must make sure I attack it without getting any injuries. Catch it before it escapes. Oh, go for it, go for it, go for it. There we go. So it is good to feed them. Snails is a good staple for the diet, but other things like clams and stuff, but yeah, you have to be careful with the diet not to feed them too heavily on one thing. So you want something that's got a little bit of hardness to it, so it keeps that beak nice and worn down. So snails, clams, that kind of thing is a good food. Mussels, you're worried about thymines, thymine, I can't remember quite when, which one it is. Um, which long term can have quite detrimental effects. But hopefully this guy should do good. Getting them warmed, getting them eating regularly, that's my main concern at least. This guy looks okay. And of course, still got Humphrey down here saying, I've not got enough attention. He's doing good. Yeah, but everything's just in a little bit of disarray at the moment. So I kind of came to terms with my abject failure building a massive fish tank some time ago. It's going to be one of those things that just requires attention every now and again. Um, 
I hesitate to say that this will be the last fix, but I'm hoping this will be the last major structural thing that can go wrong. Everything that needs to be shored up has failed and been shored up. It should be good now, um, but like I say, I've kind of, I lost the will to live with some of the early failures because I did put quite a lot into the planning of this. I just got some of it wrong. Um, the forces that are at play here, they're unimaginable. So if I was to do this again, I definitely wouldn't go for, I keep saying it's eight foot by four foot by three foot, but it's a bit over three foot. I definitely would reduce the height a little bit. I don't think having this footprint being so big and so deep is where I've gone wrong because the amount of pressure, e each individual centimetre you go down, the, the, the pressures and the forces multiply um, exponentially almost. And it's like we're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of kilograms of force. I just totally underestimated it and that is my problem. Um, hopefully I'm learning. Hopefully I can counter them with all these metal brackets and stuff that will shore it up and then in the next video you'll get to see this full with all the fish in it happily swimming around. But like I say, if you are interested in finding out more about that real time, Friday night, 9pm UK time, you can come along to the live stream, ask me any questions there. I am help helpful, I am thankful for all the suggestions about how to fix this, but literally everything that could go wrong has gone wrong and I have had to deal with it. If there's something to try, I've tried it. Not to say I'm not appreciative of any suggestions, it's just, yeah, I have tried a lot of them. But still, if you have any comments, let me know down below. They're always useful. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.